What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Adventure Outpost. Another weekend has come and gone and it is once again time to talk those juicy box office numbers and they are not very great for this weekend. We have officially hit the lowest grossing weekend of the year. We're going to dive into all of that up next but as quickly as we can as always before we begin hit that subscribe button smash that like button drop some comments down below i want to know if you went out to the theater this weekend and if you did what you went and saw and now we turn our attention as always over to the 2023 box office week over week charts we take a look here as always starting here in 37th week of the year we at 42 million dollars for the weekend a 24.4 percent drop from the previous weekend 42 is low enough for us to claim the lowest grossing weekend of the year so far. We knew September was going to be a wasteland. We just didn't know how high it was going to drop, but now we know we are going to already hit the lowest of the lows. Hopefully this is the lowest it will go. It looks like we have some big, huge titles dropping this weekend that'll hopefully give us that boost that we need here in September. And then we have a kickoff in October of a bevy of hits that will hopefully keep us above and 42 will be the lowest that we will drop for the entire year. We will go no lower than that, hopefully, but not a great weekend here at the box office. We didn't really expect much from the Expendables and it was just a just sad weekend here at the box office. But now we turn our attention over to the top 10, as always, to see where everything led. And my top five, we said last weekend, we dropped our top five was nowhere near close a couple of them at least all of the titles that i said would be in the top five are in the top five but i did not really get the order right at all except for the bottom two um i you know so let's take a look here we said expendable i said expendables would be number one and absolutely surprisingly something that i did not expect to see happen was that was not the case we take our turn our attention now to that top 10 if we look here now something that i did not think was going to happen in a movie that we're going to talk more about holding for number one for week over week here is the nun 2 holding strong at number one for three weeks in a row now we're going to talk more about that in just a little bit but it's just so crazy the nun 2 holding it for three weeks in a row at number one drops 42.2 percent takes in 8.4 million dollars being sold domestic call to 69 million over a 38 million dollar budget so just another successful horror movie dropping here just absolutely making money hand over fist in second place is The Expendables 4, just an absolute devastating bomb here. Opens in second place with $8.3 million. Couldn't even make double digits in its opening weekend. Couldn't even hit 10 over the $100 million budget. So this is going to be a huge, disappointing entry in The Expendables franchise. It blows my mind that we even got a fourth one. Like, I don't know who was clamoring or asking for this. And it turns out nobody, uh, nobody went and saw this movie. In third place, we get a Haunting in Venice in its second week. Drops 55.9%, takes in $6.3 million. We get sold domestic called 25 over $60 million budget. So a bit of a ways left to go for this movie to make itself its budget back. But it looks like at least with the international to combine to make its worldwide total, it'll at least make its budget back there. And it'll make itself a little bit of change here. Hopefully it can stick around here in the top five for a little bit longer here to make just a bit more money to get closer to that $60 million budget, at least domestically. In fourth place, we've got the Equalizer 3 in its fourth week, drops 34.6%, takes in $4.7 million, bringing sold domestic call to $81 million off of a $70 million budget. Couple that with its worldwide total, and you've got a nice, decent little pocket change there for the Equalizer. And rounding out the top five is Barbie in its 10th week. It has now spent 10 consecutive weeks in the top five. That is huge. Drops only 16.3%. That's also fucking huge after 10 weeks can still be having such small week to week drops it takes in 3.2 million dollars to bring its total domestic to 630 million of 145 million dollar budget just absolutely filthy right there that is a huge total over on the back five in the sixth spot, we've got My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3 in the third week, drops 37%, takes in $3 million, bring its total domestic goal to $23 million off of a budget we have no idea about. In seventh place, we've got It Lives Inside, another movie debuting here in the top 10 for its new week. You never really want to be dropping outside of the top five, but here we are in seventh place. It Lives Inside takes in $2.6 million, so not the breakout horror movie that it wanted itself to be, along with so many other great horror titles that drop around this time managing to make a decent amount of money this one just doesn't look like it's going to be up to snuff i still have to go check it out i'm hoping to go see this movie tomorrow because it does look absolutely incredible and i definitely want to check it out and see how it turns out 
in eighth place is Dumb Money in its second week, drops into a much more wide release. While we see a positive increase of a thousand percent there, it drops into way more theaters this week. I think it expands even further this upcoming week, so we'll see if this manages to increase even more. But it takes in 2.5 million dollars to bring its total domestic hold to 2.8 million dollars off of a budget we have no idea about. But I can't imagine this movie cost much to make despite its huge cast. I imagine this is probably still, if I had to guess, somewhere in the 30 million dollar range uh, this is a movie that i did go see over this weekend and i fucking loved it i thought it was such a great movie it's already crept into my top 10 for the year just an absolutely fantastic biopic about just a crazy time that happened about two years ago with gamestop i still remember all that stuff going on reading it on reddit just an absolutely wild ride in ninth place, we've got Blue Beetle in its fifth week, drops 28%, takes in $1.8 million, brings total domestic total $69 million of $104 million budget, so it doesn't look like this one's going to hit it back, at least budget wise domestically, probably with its worldwide, has made a decent amount of little change right there, to at least not make it as much of a bomb as some of the other DC movies, but still not a huge success story that they needed it to be, especially since it looked like this movie was going to kick off the new DCEU, just not kicking it off with a flourish like they needed. And rounding out the top 10 is Oppenheimer, and its 10th week drops 22.2%, takes in $1.6 million to bring its total domestic quota to $321 million off of a $100 million budget. Now, as always, we'd like to take a look at our fallen heroes. These are our heroes that did their time in the top 10, but have bowed out for greener passages. We have three movies this week that have bowed out in the top 10. We take a look here at this chart. Joan, after two weeks, bows out. Gran Turismo, after four weeks, bows out. And after a stonking seven weeks on the chart, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem bows out. You guys did your time. You had your say. But now it's time to say goodbye, and we will see you in the realm of physical media. And as always, we salute you. We turn our attention over to the top 10 worldwide and domestic for 2023. Uh, we start with the worldwide. As always, in the first spot is Barbie with $1.4 billion. The Super Mario Brothers movie right behind it with $1.3. Oppenheimer inching closer to that $1 billion marker. Sits right now at $926 million. Will it be able to hit $1 billion when all is said and done? I hope it's able to get that last little bit to make itself another billion-dollar movie because it absolutely deserves to be. That is a huge win for original filmmaking right there there that is just absolutely fantastic right behind that guardians of the galaxy volume 3 with 845 million fast x rounds out the top five with 714 million spider-man across the spider-verse with 689 full river red with 673 the wandering earth 2 with 604 the little mermaid with 569 and the mission impossible 7 creeping up on that little mermaid total right there just trying to bridge the gap sits right now with 567 million dollars over on the domestic front, Barbie still claims that first spot with $630 million. The Super Mario Brothers movie right behind it with $574. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse with $381. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 with $358. Oppenheimer with $321. The Little Mermaid with $298. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with $214. John Wick Chapter 4 with $187 million. Sound of Freedom with $183. And rounding out the top 10 right now, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny with $174 million. Dollars. Then we turn our attention over to the movies that have held number one for more than one week in 2023, and I can't believe that we're at it right here, but The Nun 2, three weeks in a row now at number one, which is good enough to beat both superhero movies that have come out from Marvel this year. Marvel, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, only holding May 7th and May 12th, and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania only holding February 17th and February 24th. The Nun 2 now right ahead of it with three weeks at number one with September 8th, the 15th, and 22nd. It is crazy so far this year that superhero movies have not been as successful as you would imagine. Obviously, Guardians of the Galaxy was definitely a huge win for them. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse at all. That movie did not hold consecutive weeks at all in a crazy summer that has just had so many movie after so many movies released. But it just goes to show we might be hitting a new era here where superhero movies are not as infallible as they once were. And it's crazy to see that we might be going on and ushering in a new era of whatever the next genre is that's going to be big and huge in the realm of cinema. And I, for one, can't wait to see what it is and what it takes shape. Not that I particularly hate superhero movies. I don't love them, but I don't particularly hate them. I just would like to see something new and something you know exciting and new and interesting come out. We Superhero movies have held onto the box office for over 10 years now. It's absolutely crazy. It's, it, I'm interested to see what comes next. 
Now the question remains, though, is is the Nun 2 going to hold another weekend, or is it going to lose to Saw 10, Paw Patrol, the creator? We have a lot of titles coming out this weekend, and the Nun 2 is now going to go up against them. I don't think we are not hitting a fourth week here, the Nun 2. Three weeks, that's a huge win for you. They're going to take that win where they get it, because they are absolutely not going to have number one when all is said and done this weekend. And then you see right ahead of that, Barbie and Super Mario Brothers, both with four weeks apiece, number one consecutively, and Avatar still the big winner right there all the way at the top with seven weeks apiece at number one no one's touching that this year it's just absolutely crazy what that showing was and then we take a look at our final chart to look at, which is our 2023 Top 10 Chart Riders. My personal favorite chart to take a look at. This is where we tally up week over week how long these movies stay in the Top 10. So at the end of the year, we can tally them up and see just what movies had the best legs at the box office here in 2023. We take a look here at the chart, and at the top, we've got Avatar The Way of Water and Puss in Boots both locked in 12 weeks and 11 weeks apiece. Will anything be able to touch that? Right now, all eyes are on Barbie. Barbie and Oppenheimer right there in the third spot at 10 weeks apiece. Those two movies in Super Mario Brothers, the only movies that have managed to hold 10 weeks in the top 10 here in 2023. And it makes sense because those are the three most popular movies from this year. So it makes sense that they've been there the longest. The question now remains is, are any of them going to be able to beat Puss in Boots and Avatar The Way of Water? Oppenheimer's in the 10th spot. So I don't think that's going to happen. That uh, I think I think Oppenheimer is going to lock in at 10 weeks because we got a bunch of new titles dropping that's going to make Oppenheimer disappear out of the top 10, I'm pretty sure. And then Barbie right now, I think is finally going to drop out of the top five with all the new movies coming out. But I still think Barbie is at least going to hit 11 weeks. I think Barbie at the very least is going to tie with Puss in Boots or tie with Avatar The Way of Water. It would be incredible if it can claim 13 weeks and claim the number one spot. But I don't know, there's a lot of titles coming out in the next few weeks, and I can see Barbie really sliding down the ranks. It, 13 weeks would put it at the opening weekend of Taylor Swift, and I, that's it's a tall order. It's a tall order. I think Barbie can do it. I wouldn't be surprised if it did it. I don't think it will. I think it's either going to lock in at 11 weeks or 12 weeks with all these movies coming out. But either or, an absolute fantastic showing from Barbie and Oppenheimer, both hitting these huge, huge highs right here at 10 weeks apiece right now. And then we look right underneath that, we got John Wick Chapter 4, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse all locked in at nine weeks. You got A Man Called Otto, Dungeons and Dragons, The Little Mermaid, and Elemental all locked in at eight weeks. We've got Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Transformers, Rise of the Beast, and Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, and now Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, joining the seven week boys all locked in right there. Blue Beetle right now sits at six weeks. I think that one's going to end up locking in at six weeks also because I think we're going to say goodbye to that in the top 10 this upcoming weekend. And then right behind that, it's Scream 6, Creed 3, Jesus Revolution, Megan Missing, Air, Evil Dead Rise, Sound of Freedom, and Mission Impossible 7 all locked in at six weeks. And then we got 80 for Brady, Cocaine Bear, Fast X, No Hard Feelings, Haunted Mansion, Talk to Me, and The Meg 2 all locked in at five weeks apiece. And that'll do it for all of us here this week at the chart. It was an absolutely just sad, quiet, pathetic weekend. Hopefully this will be the quietest and lowest weekend that we see this year at the box office. And we're going to start bouncing back big. We got a three huge titles coming out this weekend in Saw 10, Paw Patrol, and The Creator, as well as a further wide release of Dumb Money. So this could be a pretty decent weekend at the box office if we can get people in those seats. Although... The question remains of just how well are these movies going to put people in the seats? Because yes, while we've got a horror title out, how many people are really clamoring for Saw 10 outside of people that are fans of the franchise? I don't know how well that's really going to put asses into the seats. Paw Patrol, while we haven't had a kids movie in a while and we were waiting for a kids movie, the last Paw Patrol that came out came and went without a fuss. So I can't imagine that this one is really going to put up that much of a difference. It might do a little bit better. Or we might do some bit of business, but I don't know how crazy that movie will be either. And then you've got the huge up in the air title of The Creator, an original sci-fi story here that always struggles to find itself at the box office sometimes. You look at movies like Blade Runner 2049 and everything trying to find their rhythm here at the box office is The Creator 
theater going to be able to find an audience here in the box office? I, for one, absolutely hope so. The movie looks absolutely incredible. It's one of my most anticipated left for this year, so I really hope that this movie manages to find itself an audience and doesn't get lost in the shuffle there. And then as well, hopefully Dumb Money continues to bring out an audience there and finds itself a little niche market to hopefully just bolster a pretty solid weekend here at the box office. A nice bounce back from the lows that we've been hitting these past couple of weeks. Um, we take a look here to guess what our top five is. This is going to be a wild top five to pick this week. I, that's just absolutely, it's just so much stuff up in the air. I don't know what's going to be, what or where is going to end up anything. I think despite saying how many people could really be pumped for it, I still think Saw is going to win the weekend. So I'm going to say Saw is going to be number one. I'm hoping that the creator is going to be number two and that Paw Patrol will be number three. And then everything else is really up in the air. I don't know how well The Nun will do now with Saw being able to be go seen. So I think The Nun's going to die out. I think The Expendables is going to absolutely die out. I don't know how well the holdover is going to be for a haunting in Venice. Actually, I'm going to call haunting in Venice will drop to fourth. I think that with the seniors, it's been pulling people, so I think it might still manage to hold fourth. And I think the equalizer is going to die out. Also, I could still I could see Barbie possibly holding on to the top five here. Either so, either Barbie or the equalizer three is going to be number five because I don't think dumb even with the wider release of Dumb Money, I still don't think it's going to be enough to jump it up into the top five. I think it's going to remain in the bottom five of the top 10. Um, so I think number five is gonna be either Equalizer or Barbie, but right now we'll call it, I'll say, I'll say Saw 10, The Creator, Paw Patrol, Haunting in Venice, Barbie. That's gonna be my top five, we're gonna call it. I was nowhere near close this week, but at least I had all the top five titles in there and I'm gonna go for that this week. Hopefully we can get pretty close to it. But that'll do it for all of us here at the Outpost this weekend. As always, you have been you, I have been me. These are the movies that we love so much. And until the next adventure, I'll see you guys at the movie.